So this is the EGX Ranger truck. This particular model is the EGX 70, seven ton capacity. It's a 120 volt truck designed for multi-shift operations. It has a single piece battery above deck, which is easily removable by a crane or fork pockets to allow multi-shift uh, operations. So this is the machine that's replacing many diesel GXs now. So because it's a 120 volt truck, we're getting up to nine hours runtime on a single charge with an eight hour window to recharge. It's allowing multi-shift operations. Battery takes around five minutes to change, so it's a very simple procedure. So say it can be done with a forklift or with an overhead crane, depending on the operation. Uh, when you look at the diesel truck now, you can see you've not only got diesels, but you've got AdBlue on the latest engines. Unless you're under the 55 kilowatt threshold for the engine where you don't need AdBlue. We're the only people who make a 120 volt side loader with a single piece battery above deck. So it is really becoming one of our best selling products. What industries would you say this suits best? Realistically now it'll, it'll go into all our major uh, applications. You know, the market here in the UK, is the biggest market is timber for sure, followed by steel. But because the truck is as powerful as our diesel machine, it can do a, a full shift on a single battery and then if it needs to multi-shift, you can battery change easily. There's really not an application that it won't suit now. But even with the shift changing in the batteries, you find that you can still get a full day shift even on the really long runs. Uh, obviously, as I say, the cost of running an electric truck is significantly less than running the diesel without Add blue costs, fuel costs, as we've said, red diesels no longer available from April 2022 uh, for running forklift trucks. So the cost of fuel are going to nearly double. The maintenance on the engines is, is becoming more and more and more. You've got DPFs, DOCs now on stage five engines. So the maintenance costs are significantly lower. And we've actually now just got to the point for the first time where a diesel truck is on par with the capital cost of an electric truck because of the stage five engine. So we're now at that point where there is no actual cost difference between the two products. So you get the initial cost savings on maintenance immediately. Whereas before the diesel truck with the stage three B and the stage four engine was cheaper. It took you a year or so to get the initial capital cost back in the savings on fuel and maintenance. Now it's instantaneous. So the main difference you'll find with the side loader uh, the first thing that drivers notice is they're obviously sat to one side of the machine rather than in the center as you normally are with a counterbalance truck. And obviously your mast is off to the side, hence the term side loader. So the idea of a side loader is for you to pick your load from the side, place to your deck, and then you've got clear visibility and safety for traveling wherever you're taking the load to. So one of the things that people say when they first operate a side loader is, well, I'm going to be twisted all day and looking and I'm going to get strain here. But when you're sat in the cabin, it's a natural thing for you to twist your torso and you can see the visibility here. But you're only actually doing that when you're picking the load. And when you pick the load and place it to the deck, you are then in a natural position for driving with clear visibility looking forward, which is a much safer way of handling. So one thing you'll notice about a Bowman machine is how far we retract our mast back into the chassis. You'll see that you've got visibility here. So I can see through my rear cabin window and see the corner of the deck. Whereas a lot of our competitors machines, the mast is in this position. So it's very difficult to see. So with the mast retracted as you get with our Bowman, we've got excellent visibility in this corner for when we're reversing and backing towards a load because in a lot of applications you will back and swing the truck into the load so it's very visible to see your back corner for positioning of the truck. So if you were to pick a long load in front of you as you've probably seen many pictures of a counterbalance truck the load is going to obstruct your view so you're going to start contravening health and safety by either lifting that load in the air which is unsafe or the proper way to handle it in the safest possible way with a counterbalance truck is to travel in reverse. So you're actually driving in that position. Whereas with the side loader, the load's safe, secure on the deck at the side of you, 
you're traveling in a very normal position safely forward with clear visibility so you're only twisted to the side to look sideways when you're handling the load either on or off the vehicle to the floor etc when you're traveling and moving the load into a building you, you're in the safest and most comfortable position for traveling This machine is fitted with a rear view camera, but we can also have carriage mounted cameras and front corner cameras. So again, you can sit on the monitor rather than twisting to look at the side. We can also offer a swivel seat, which will give you an angle to so you're not twisting your torso as much. We're here ready to pick a load. The mast's fully retracted and we can see, so I can see the back deck of the machine. I can see the fork tips clearly. I can raise my forks. To the height of the load so we'll imitate that we're at a lorry bed we reach out of the mast and again I'm looking at the tip of my fork to the load we've got the ability to tilt the machine to pick the load or enter the fork into the load as we enter we then raise the load retract back to the bed we drop the load to the bed safe and secure level the truck and then we're ready to go so once you become more familiar with the operation of a side loader position of the truck becomes very important and becomes very very easy once you use to the format of how to drive these machines. So I can see here, you can see I'm looking at the edge of the chassis of the deck. So I know with my forks fully retracted, that is my reference point for a, a lorry trailer, etc. As I say, with the mass fully retracted, I've got a perfect view of the back corner of this truck, which again gives me a reference for the rear of the truck and for the side. So when we're coming up to something parallel, which is what we're trying to do, you've got two great reference points of the chassis. So it, the truck is very maneuverable, has a very tight steering angle. So for a long truck, the truck will turn incredibly tightly up against the load. We're gonna pretend that this container is a lorry and we'll show you just how tight this machine can actually maneuver. So again, I'm looking at the back corner of my truck. I select reverse and I can swing the truck in. And again, I'm using the chassis to see that I'm parallel to the lorry trailer. And there I am from a 90 degree swing straight in. I would then reach out, collect the load. Again, I can see the fork tips at this point because I'm clear of the load. I would then extend the mast. I use the body tilt to tilt the forks to get to the position I want reach all the way out and the mast comes further than the chassis and the fork hills we collect the load we tilt the truck backwards to secure the load we track the mast with the load lower the forks and bring the load to the deck for traveling and again one thing you'll notice with the bowman when we take the wheel on the inside of the chassis is inset so we can get some lock on without touching the load and if you watch how the, the truck will pull away from the container or load so this is the standard joystick we use on the egx machine if you put your hand around the joystick you'll hear it uses the electromagnetity of your hand very much like a smartphone does on a smart screen. The beauty of that is if you let go of the joystick, you can hear the truck's instantly gone to sleep, conserving energy. But also what you've got, if you're writing or doing something on your notes in the cabin and you catch it, you won't accidentally operate the hydraulics. And if you've got a load there, you could cause an incident. So, so if you put your hand around the joystick, we've got several functions on here. And the idea is for you to keep one hand on the wheel at all times, and you can function everything from here. 
So on the back of the joystick, you've got a directions selection. So you've got forward is your forward click, one click back is neutral, and then into reverse. So you can change your direction here completely and utterly off this joystick without having to use the column. The column's there if you want to use it, but you can't use two in conjunction. So if you want to use the joystick, this must be in neutral. If you want to use the direction lever, the joystick must be in neutral. If you do this, so you've got the joystick in forward, as, yeah, so the joystick in forward and the gear, the truck won't go anywhere. It hasn't seen a fault yet. If you try to drive, it won't do anything. So, I, so fairly standard functions you would expect. If you pull back towards you, the mast will lift. If you push away from you, the mast will lower. If you reach away from you, the mast will reach out away from you. And if you reach back, the mast will come retract. Now one thing to remember about the joystick as well, it's a potentiometer effect, so think of it as an accelerator pedal. So this truck's currently set quite slow on the hydraulics because it's our demonstration unit. But one thing you must be conscious of is making sure you've got good contact because we do get what you were doing there is a tendency because it's so easy to use people start to use the edge of the fingers and they'll say oh the hydraulics are cutting out yeah. because it's not seeing enough of your hand uh, it's very comfortable it is very comfortable very ergonomic this machine has one additional feature on the joystick so you've got body tilt which is obviously standard which is this roller switch here so if you roll forward or backwards the truck tilts and as with all side loaders, it's the whole truck that tilts, not the mast. You can have then an additional tilting carriage if you want additional tilt, which you would normally see on something like a reach truck, but so we can give you an extra five degrees of, neg of negative or positive tilt on the carriage should you require. This machine has, is equipped with a fork positioner. So the second switch rolls to move your forks in and out. The additional red buttons would be for more options so if for instance if the truck did have a tilting carriage you would then depress this button and use the switch mm -hmm. because they're not activated it's using its function but that then becomes a selector switch okay. so you can so you can affect that these buttons will give you two more functions so here we are out at a concrete manufacturing plant in northumberland uh, today handing over an egx60 Concrete manufacturers are synonymous with the use of diesel trucks, but with the ever-changing benefits of electric machines, the 120 volt EGX machine now is proven that it can match performance and shift life of our diesel products. This made this an obvious choice due to the supply of electricity here from when the site was previously an aluminium smelting plant. Where we are today is a multi-shift operation. We have supplied spare batteries with the machines. The trucks are capable of up to nine hours runtime on a single charge. There will be occasions where a spare battery will be required on longer days and particularly during the winter and dark months where we're using lights and heaters in during the day. So spare batteries are a benefit to the site and are easily changed by a use of a forklift on this particular site but can be used with overhead cranes as well. This machine is fitted with a wide carriage fork positioner uh, driven by a chain. This enables the forks to spread outside the chassis to an external width of six meters. It also allows the carriage to be lifted and the forks be brought back to inside the well as a traditional side loader. This allows the truck to handle shorter products and then the long hollow core products which are produced on this side. This is a train driven wide carriage with a plus or minus 100 millimeter lifting and lowering rear fork, which allows the leveling of the load to match the trailer that the load's about to be loaded onto, or on the uneven ground when the holoco product's on the floor. We have multiple functions on the joystick available via additional auxiliary buttons. On this machine, we have two additional functions over normal, which is the fork spread on the chain and the lifting and lowering of the rear fork. You can see here we use one of the additional auxiliary buttons 
and the joystick moving left and right. When the button's not pressed, the left and right function brings the mast in and out in a normal manner. So the other additional function on this machine is the lifting and lowering of the rear fork. This allows the load to be leveled when such a long product is handled as the holocores that can be over six meters in length. This allows the load to be put to the match the angle of the floor that it's being dropped to or the trailer that it's being loaded to and protects the product from damage. So we have the battery above the deck on our 120 volt truck in a single piece which allows for battery changing for multi-shift applications. With having the battery above the deck it does restrict visibility in the rear corner so we tend to always fit the rear view camera to counteract the slight loss of vision in the back corner. So it's a fish-eyed camera so you can see you can see right behind. So the visibility you lose by having the battery over the deck slightly in that back corner you've got a camera to counteract it. Uh, some people don't mind that because it does give you a reference point on the back of the chassis. Some people are used to having an engine on a diesel truck below deck so you do get some slight restriction in visibility but as I say that's counteracted by your rear view camera and we tend to genuinely fit that pretty much on 95% of, of these machines. Lift until it locks into position and I say if you if you pull the clevis pin that will release that and the, the whole roof flips over including this this guard which is on struts so this comes all the way out and you can climb out through the roof in an emergency should you need to. So to access the battery we lift this lid which is on a gas strut and that gives us access to the battery area ready for topping and checking the cells. When we come to check the battery the water level should always be checked after charge, never before. A battery cell, when it's discharging, as in you're using the electricity, draws the water into the cell, very much like a sponge. When you charge, the water is expelled. So if you top before you charge the truck, you risk the chance of overtopping the battery and then the electrolyte spilling out from the cells and causing damage to the battery. So topping is always done after charging. To check the water level in each individual cell, you can see there's a flow on the top of each individual cell. These are topped perfectly because you can see the flow is fully flush to the top. Some of the cells that are starting to use water, you can see the float starting to, to depress in the cell, meaning that these cells are getting ready to start to be topped. To top the battery, you use this autofill system. You just pull the collar, connect, and the water will flow. So this has to be sat higher than the battery. So usually we bring the forks to the top of the mass channel, pop this on the fork full of water and leave for a maximum of 15 minutes. The battery will draw the water that it needs. You'll see all these cells will then come back to the top and the battery's topped. Coming to recharge the machine, we've turned the key off in the cabin. We have to wait 60 seconds, which just lets all the static charge in the cables, etc., and the capacitors on the truck settle. So we open this door by lifting these catchers and twisting and the door opens. This brings us to the battery and where it's connected to the machine. On this particular truck it's fitted with a YIQ system which is a battery monitoring device. We've waited the 60 seconds, we press the emergency stop button in the back of the truck which disconnects the electrics, we pull this handle which releases the battery plug, pull forward and brings, which releases the machine for charging. The machine's fully charged, you release the, the plug from the battery, place the charger handle away somewhere safe. So to reconnect to the machine, you place the plug in line with the guides, and push the handle into place, which puts the battery plug together. Release the emergency stop button, and close your door.